All right, so today we're gonna look at some ball python hatchlings that just hatched out of the eggs. As a matter of fact, about two days ago, I actually went in there and cut open the eggs. We kind of peeked in the eggs to see the results of the pairing. This pairing was actually the combination of a bamboo calico crossed with a lesser. So we actually got we actually got three blue-eyed leucistics, which is pretty cool. The all-white snake with the blue eyes. And this line of bamboo is from Bobby here around my neck. This is, I guess you could say, it's the Bobby line of bamboo. A really awesome, a really high contrast and bright line of bamboo. It's pretty amazing. It seems like all the offspring that this guy produces are really intense and high contrast like this guy. So what I want to do today is I want to pull that egg box out of the incubator. I actually peeked in there today and it looked like all the hatchlings were all out of the eggs. So I want to get a closer look at all these hatchlings and then what I want to do is I want to name them. I actually have a jar full of names and believe it or not I got the names from comments uh, from suggested names. As a matter of fact if you have suggested names I'm kind of going for like a gender neutral name if you can think of a name because I, I don't really like to pro and figure out the males and the females until a couple weeks down the road until I get enough rodents into these until they're ready for sale. So I kind of give them gender neutral names right off the bat so we don't have to figure out the males and the females. And then once they get to a certain size, I go in and probe them, figure out the males and females, and then I'll post them over on Morph Market for sale. I'd say probably in about two to three weeks, these will be posted over on Morph Market. So let's jump over. I'm gonna pull those, those hatchlings out of the incubator and and we'll set them up in the hatchling rack. All right, so this is a pretty awesome clutch. I actually put, hit the odds pretty good on this one. So let's take a look. I haven't actually, I just kind of peeked in here real quick and looked at all the empty eggshells and it looked like all of them were completely out of all the eggs and take a look at that that is a pretty awesome collection of a whole bunch of like a whole variety of different snakes in there which is kind of wild I actually hit the blue-eyed leucistic pretty good so the, the, the so the possible genes in here you can actually hit the bamboo the lesser and the calico and all these are possible head desert ghosts so one of the parents was actually 50% head desert ghost and we didn't actually haven't proved it out yet so there's it's possible some of these could be head desert ghosts but look at all these snakes this is a whole clump of snakes take a look at that that is pretty awesome right there that is pretty nice all right, so let's take a closer look at what we have. Take a look at this, of course. Let's take a look at this one first because this is this is Bobby's grandson or granddaughter. And take a look at this. This is just a straight bamboo right from the Bobby line, which as a matter of fact, there's been a lot of people asking if they could get like on a waiting list for, for these bamboos. So I have a lot of people really interested. These go super fast. As a matter of fact, when I put these on more market last Last time. I think I had like seven of them that I saw last year right at the end and within 12 hours all seven of them sold which was pretty crazy when they went super fast. So I haven't really been taking, you know, like a waiting list or anything like that. I just kind of post them over there and the first one to respond pretty much gets the first shot. And kind of the cool thing about the bamboos is usually with the straight bamboo, you get a lot of these heart shaped patterns on the side. And this one, you can't really see too many heart shaped patterns. And I was wondering some of these, uh, well, I would say if you had calico, so with the, with the bamboo calico, you can definitely tell because usually with the calico, it completely wipes out the sides and you wouldn't have this much pattern. So I'm thinking this is just a straight bamboo, no calico and obviously no lesser because if you had lesser with the bamboo, you would actually end up with the all white snake. And then this one's possible head desert ghost. I have yet to produce a bamboo desert ghost, which would be pretty awesome if you produced one. So what I want to do with this one first, before we jump in on the other ones, I want to give this guy a name. So let's close this up so none of these actually jump out. And what I do is I set them up in a hatching tra hatchling tray like this. This actually goes in my 
ARS 1039 hatchling rack. This also fits in my ARS 1065 hatchling rack. So I can fit a whole bunch of hatchlings in here. As a matter of fact, uh, there's, a, there's a couple more clutches that I had just recently that I didn't make videos of. I think I have 91 eggs in the incubator now. I had so many things going on. I was actually just kind of walking out the door. I was like, all right, I want to check my snakes. And sure enough, I just had these random clutches of eggs that I didn't, I actually didn't film them, but I put them up in the incubator which will definitely do egg cutting on these. So this guy looks like he wants to crawl out a little bit. So what I wanna do is I wanna give this guy a name. So I'm not sure if it's a male or female, but we'll actually probe him a little bit later on, see if we can get a name out of this one. All right, so this guy's new name, that bamboo is Buzzer. Buzzer the bamboo. That fits really good. So what I want to do is I want to make a name with my label maker. I want to make a quick name so I can I can kind of show you what I what I use for the label on this guy when I put him up in the hatchling rack. All right, so this is what the label looks like. I actually put the name of the snake, Buzzer, and then I put C0121. So this is the first clutch of 2021. This is a bamboo, possible head desert ghost. And then after a couple weeks, I'll get some rodents into them. It seems like when you, if you actually probe them at this size, the, the males and the females, I say you get a, a high percentage of them that are incorrect. I've actually probed a lot. Like when I first started, I would probe them as soon as they asked out of the egg, like at this size. And it seemed like I was wrong on a lot of them when I went back. So now what I do is I wait till they have at least maybe four rodents in them. They get a little bit bigger size. They get a little bit older, just a couple weeks. And then it seems like when you probe them, figure out the males and females, it's, it's virtually 100% at that point. So I really like to wait when I'm probing my males and my females. So I actually had two that I already put up in the hatchling rack. This one is another bamboo that we hatched up from the same clutch. This one is Snuggles, still hasn't shed yet. And it's amazing, if you actually look at them like this right out of the egg, they are really kind of subdued compared to the color after the first shed. When they have the very first shed, let me tell you, they're really super intense, probably the brightest and the cleanest of their whole life. So this is another one. I actually have one more up in the hatchling rack. Let me show you that one. All right, so this was from that same clutch. This is Titan. We named this one Titan. And the reason I wanted to pull this one out is because I have another one in here that looks like maybe it's a normal or a calico. And it's really hard to tell the difference between this one and a normal. So take a look at this one. This looks, <laughs> the, 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 kind of the weird thing about this, this looks really similar to just a normal ball python, but take a look at the difference between these two. We have like a really light normal and what I think is, I don't know, this, this is kind of weird because usually when you get a whole bunch of normals, they all look really similar. And these are completely <laughs> different looking normals. And it must be like the base normal of those two are completely different. The other thing I was thinking is maybe this is a calico because my line of calico is kind of this almost like a rusty color, but it doesn't really have the kind of the traditional wiped out sides that you'd see from the calico. The calico usually really wipes out the sides. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if, that's, if that's calico or not. I would say it's uh, it's a hard call on this one. I'd say it's just a different color of a normal on this one, but compared to this one, it just kind of blows me away. I've never seen two completely different normals come out of the same clutch like that, which is pretty wild. So I don't know what is going on with this. I'm calling this one a normal. So I think, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to name this one, pull it out and set this one up in the hatchling rack. I don't know though, because if you actually look right back here, it almost has this little streaked out part right here and right here. That looks like what you'd see in a calico on the side. And it is a lot more kind of the rusty color. I don't know, I'm kind of leaning towards calico on this one, but it's really hard. It almost looks like you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put this one as possible calico. It will come back after they shed and kind of brighten up a little bit, and we'll compare them side by side. I'm gonna put possible calico on this. I think this is just a really low expression calico. 
All right, so I pulled a name for this guy, set him up in the, a new hatchling rack. I named this guy Magnum. Magnum C0121, he's the first clutch of 2021. And I said, possible Calico, possible head desert ghost. I don't know, the more I look at this guy, it seems like from the head all the way down to like right here, it seems like he looks pretty normal all the way down. Just has a little bit of streaking right at the end. Slightly reddish color, so I'm not 100% convinced that this is actually a calico. It looks almost like a normal to me. <laughs> Someone had me that, I was like, that looks pretty much like a normal, but you know, with the difference in color and a little bit of streaking, I'd say there's a possibility that this could be a calico. All right, so let's take a look at another snake. We have quite a few. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. All right, look at this beauty. This is everybody. Fa everybody's favorite snake is the all white snake with the blue eyes. This is a blue eyed leucistic, and this is the combination of the bamboo and the lesser coming together. Both are in the blue eyed leucistic complex. And kind of the weird thing is if you get a super lesser with two copies of the lesser gene, you'll actually get a snake that has larger than normal eyes. And pretty much from what I've seen, when you mix the lesser with the bamboo, it, it seems like you get a really super white snake and you get eyes that are a really good shape that look like normal size eyes are not too big, not too small, and they're really bright blue too. And a lot of times with these bamboo lessers, a lot of times you'll get a really faint yellow line right down the top of the snake. And of course with the white snake, it pretty much masks all the other genes. So this one could be possibly calico. I don't know if there's any way you could determine if there's calico in here without breeding it to something else and seeing if half the offspring come out calico. So, you know, a lot of these blue-eyed leucistics, a lot of times you can get a lot of other genes in the mix. <laughs> and a lot of times, a lot of times you can get a really good deal because you're buying an all-white snake, you're paying just for the, you know, the two genes, like a bamboo lesser. A lot of times you'll get, you know, possibly multiple other genes. And in this case, you have, well, as a matter of fact, you get uh, like a 50% chance that this would have calico in it. And this is also possible Het Desert Ghost too, which is pretty wild. So another thing you wanna look for uh, that I really haven't showed in any of these is you wanna make sure that there's no kinks in the spine all the way up and down the, the snake. You wanna make sure there's no kinks, no deformities in the eyes. You wanna kinda of look at the mouth too to make sure there's no weird things going on with the mouth. I know in like certain combinations, sometimes you can get kind of, of a random, like either eye anomalies or mouth, but it, it can happen with any combination. So as a breeder, you wanna make sure to look at all that stuff and if someone buys the snake, you can make sure to point it out. Usually if they have some kind of a physical deformity a lot of people will really mark the price down depending on what's going on with the snake. So that's kind of something to keep in mind if you're breeding snakes. So I actually printed out a label for this guy and picked a name. We actually, I call this one Pee Wee. This is Pee Wee. Look at the label on this one. So this is Pee Wee C0121, the, the first clutch of, of 2021. This is a bamboo lesser, possible calico and possible het desert go. So I want to set this guy up in the hatchling rack. This guy's really squirrely. <laughs> just, I don't know where he's going. He's just kind of taking off all over the place. All right, so let's take a look at another snake here in the egg box. The one I really want to look at is this lesser. Take a look at this one. This is similar to what the female looked like. So I actually bred the bamboo calico to the lesser. And this is, it seems like with the lessers, they're really super bright as they're, as, as they're young. As a matter of fact, this one is a little bit faded out because it hasn't shed yet. Pretty much all of these, they haven't gone through the first shed yet. So usually right after the first shed, I'd say the lessers are probably the, the brightest in their entire life. And if you actually, so this one could be lesser, it could be calico, but usually when you mix in calico in with the lesser, uh, my version, 
version of Calico will actually give it kind of a rusty color. So I don't really see the rusty color. And you'll actually see with the Calico, a lot of kind of the, the pattern on the side will be wiped out and really pixelated, usually with the Calico. As a matter of fact, the, the, uh, the, I actually have a Calico pastel that's really super pixelated and really kind of a rusty color. You can definitely see it even as an adult, it really messes up the pattern and gives it that kind of a rusty color. So I'd say this is just a stray lesser. And keep in mind the lessers are in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. So if you breed this to anything else in the blue-eyed leucistic complex, 25% of the time you'll end up with an all-white snake with blue eyes. So you can actually mix it with uh, uh, the other lessers or the bamboo, the mocha, the mystic, the phantom. <laughs> a lot of, as a matter of fact, uh, the the if, as a matter of fact, if you uh, mix the lesser with anything else in the blue-eyed leucistic, you almost always get a pure white snake. Sometimes you'll get some combinations where a little bit of pattern will come through, but usually with the lessers and the bamboos, you'll get all white snakes. Versus if you had, for example, like the Mojave, and you mix the Mojave with certain other genes in the blue-eyed leucistic, sometimes you can get kind of a purplish colored snake, like the purple passions and the mystic potions, which is kind of interesting. So I actually pulled a name on this guy and printed a label already. So this is Luna the Lesser. <laughs> this is a pretty awesome snake. So this is Luna C0121. This is a lesser possible, uh, actually, I'll have to reprint this label. I actually had possible calico that I had on my blood leucistic. So this is not possible calico. I'd say this is definitely not possible calico, but this is possible het desert ghost on this one. All right, so we have two more. This is actually an eight egg clutch. Really good odds on this one. So let's take a look at the next one here. This is another blue-eyed leucistic. So the, the blue-eyed leucistic, of course, is a combination of the bamboo and the lesser. Both are in the blue-eyed leucistic and both make all white snakes when you mix them with other genes in the blue-eyed leucistic. So take a look at this one. This one, uh, as a matter of fact, if you actually look at the eyes on this one, maybe they're just a little bit bigger then you'd actually see, uh, sometimes uh, the, the, on these blue-eyed leucistics, sometimes it can be really variable as far as the size of the eye, even with like one specific thing. So usually they say like if you have a super lesser, two copies of the lesser, you get bug eyes, and in some cases they're like really big bug eyes, like bug out, almost look like an alien, the eyes are so big and popping out. And sometimes you can get super lessers that almost look completely normal, so it's not 100%, and I'd say just kind of randomly, with these blue-eyed leucistics, you'll actually get bigger or smaller than normal eyes. I'd say this one looks almost perfectly normal, maybe slightly bigger as far as the eyes that you'd see in just a regular normal ball python. And the other kind of interesting thing on these is it almost looks like they have almost like abrasions on the side. I think that's from just not shedding for the first time and you can actually see it's kind of almost almost looks like it has, like it's all scraped up or something there's no kinks at all on this one and i've noticed in a lot of these once they shed for the first time they're like super super white another thing you can actually look at is you can look at the navel area and the belly so i've actually seen i had one snake a long time ago that had a really weird kind of a weird anomaly like this big mass right on the navel area so you can actually check on that too i usually don't check unless it's really obvious but that's another thing you could do if you're breeding ball pythons to kind of look at the belly area so so in this one, I pulled another name for this one. This one's name is Terminator. This is a Bamboo Lesser Possible Calico and Possible Het Desert Ghost. Really beautiful blue-eyed leucistic. All right, so here's the last snake we can take a look at, and this box will be empty. All these eggshells are completely empty. Just have one more snake 
in here another beautiful blue eyed leucista and it's funny actually i went to the reptile shows when i was selling snakes at the shows which i really don't do anymore because it seems like as soon as i post them on morph market they sell instantly it's kind of crazy so i really don't have anything for the shows because i don't really have the inventory to do it i used to just go to the reptile shows just to kind of meet everyone and see what people are doing as far as the like the breeding projects they have going on but so this one is let's take a closer look at this one this one is pretty awesome looking for kinks you always want to look for kinks no kinks looking good no and nothing on the navel area if you actually take a look at the eyes really nice bright blue eyes pretty normal size eyes almost like perfectly normal size on this one and really super bright blue on that one really good looking snake and it's, it's kind of weird you really can't see the faint yellow line almost just a little bit but it seems like once they shed you get especially when they're younger you can see this faint yellow line down the top and then as they age and mature the yellow line kind of fades and they get brighter and brighter right almost like a really stark white which is pretty awesome and yeah, when I was selling these at the reptile shows, you know, people would, <laughs> it's funny, they come up to my table at the reptile shows and they're like, hey, can we hold the white snake? Everybody wants to hold the white snake. It's not like this is probably, I'd say probably one of the most popular pet snakes, not necessarily, you know, for breeding. I'd say probably most people looking for a pet snake would want an all white snake with blue eyes just because it's a really popular pet. So this one, I actually set up my little hatchling tray here. We can put them in here, put them up in the rack. And I named this one, pull a name from the list. This is Cobra. Cobra is the first clutch of 21, C0121. This is a bamboo lesser, possible calico, possible het desert ghost. Pretty awesome looking snake. So my next clutch of eggs are gonna start hatching in about, as a matter of fact, the hatch date is about a week and a half. So I'm thinking just a couple days over a week, usually a few days before the hatch date, we can go in and cut the eggs and take a look at them and see what our results are. And that one's pretty awesome. That one's actually a cross between my uh, pastel inchy desert ghost it's a visual desert ghost and i crossed it with my pastel calico 100 percent had desert ghost so we should be able to get you know the crown jewel from that one would be like a super pastel inchy calico desert ghost uh, like half of those it's an 8 egg clutch and half of them should be visual desert ghosts if we hit the odds kind of average so you know you know with the odds you know sometimes you can hit a lot of visuals sometimes you can you know hit hardly any it really kind of goes back and forth from year to year which is kind of crazy so we have that one coming up we have another uh, another clutch where half of them should be visual albino pides coming up from that one i think uh, I can't remember how many eggs were in that. I think it was like six or seven eggs in that one. Maybe eight on that one. Uh, maybe not. I think that was kind of a smaller. I have to go back and see how many eggs were in there. But we'll definitely, I would say, hopefully we'll actually get some visual albino pies. And then I had some really big clutches with my banana enchi het clown. And well, it was, it was actually a visual clown, so everything in those clutches will be 100% het clown. And the banana enchis are absolutely breathtaking, one of my favorite combinations. So we got a lot of eggs coming up as far as what's gonna hatch. Uh, it was kind of weird because I had a whole bunch of eggs laid all at the same time, so we're going to be cutting like like crazy over a short little period. And then it was like a few weeks later, I had a few laid clutches laid. So I think I had, this year, I think I had 99 eggs that were laid, and I think eight of them were slugs, so I think we have 91 eggs in the incubator. Of course, now that we have... Uh, uh, eight that are already up in the hatchling rack you have to subtract those two so potentially we could have 91 hatchlings this year which is definitely one of my best years I think my best year was like 113 eggs that I got that were good that, that actually produced hatchlings one of my very first years was really super productive so that's pretty much it I'm really excited to get my first eight snakes up in the hatchling rack which is pretty awesome maybe one of these could be one of your future snakes if you're interested in some of these uh, if you can actually catch them in time when I post them over on morph market so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video